Hello, and thank you for standing by for Leisure Third Quarter 2020 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants in listen-only mode. After management's prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. Please note that today's conference call has been recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the meeting over to your host for today's conference, Ms. Michelle Yuan, Leisure's Deputy CFO. Thank you. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Leisure's third quarter 2020 earnings conference call. Today, we will update you regarding our financial results for third quarter ended September 30th, 2020. If you would like a copy of the earnings press release or would like to sign up for our email distribution list, please go to our, our IR website at ir.leju.com. Leading the call today is Mr. Jeffrey He, our CEO, who will review operational highlights for third quarter 2020. Mr. Li Lancheng, our acting CFO, will then discuss the financial results in more detail. We will then open the call to questions. Before we continue, please allow me to read you the Ju Safe Harbor Statement. Some of the statements during this conference call are forward-looking statements made under the Safe Harbor provisions of Section 21E of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 as amended. Forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that may cause actual results to differ materially from our current expectations. Potential risks and uncertainties include, but are not limited to those outlined in our public filings with the SEC. You are encouraged to review the forward-looking statements section of our annual report filed with the SEC for additional information concerning factors that could cause those differences. LeJu does not undertake any obligation to publicly update any forward-looking statements, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise, except as required by applicable law. Our earnings press release and this call include discussions of unaudited gap financial information, as well as of unaudited non-gap financial measures. Our press release contains a reconciliation of the unaudited non-GAAP measures to the unaudited most directly comparable GAAP measures. Please note that unless otherwise stated, all figures mentioned during this conference call are in U.S. dollars. I will now turn the call over to Le Ju's CEO, Jeffrey He. He Zong, please go ahead. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on today's call. We maintain a strong momentum for our business development in the third quarter and I realize healthy growth in our both advertising and e-commerce business. We continue to promote our digital marketing capabilities in the third quarter, and our online marketing promotions were well received throughout the industry. Also, we saw that the innovations we implemented in our online advertising business have been a strong match for the new wave of online marketing needs we've seen emerge recently. In addition, we further developed the innovative tools on our online transaction platform, which also benefits the long-term growth of our e-commerce business. Following upon our 618 festival in June, during the third quarter, we once again successfully held our Suni and the Leju A108 Summer Storm sale. These two activities deepened our partnership with SUNY and involved more than 100 brands and over 500 real estate product, projects. In September, our affiliate company eHouse and Alibaba jointly launched the Tmall housing platform and the real estate transaction corporation mechanism, which is called ETC. As part of this, together with the Tmall housing, SUNY, eBuy, and uh, eHouse, we jointly launched the Double Eleven Timor Housing 10 billion subsidy promotion during the double 11 period. These activities have received strong industry recognition, especially our double 11 promotion, which involved 302 brands and over 2,000 real estate products. The double 11 promotion played a positive role in promoting incremental revenues for our online advertising business for the fourth quarter and encourage developers to provide discounts to further feedback our e-commerce business. The success of these activities further highlights our multiple channel digital marketing capabilities, 
takes the development of our online advertising and e-commerce business to the next level and further solidifies our position in the real estate marketing industry as a leader in providing comprehensive solutions throughout the value chain. In the fourth quarter, we will hold our series of influential annual events marketing double 12. We look forward to building on the momentum of double 11, further enhancing our influence in the industry, increasing product innovation, and significantly improving our client coverage and the service level as we end the year on a strong note and begin to prepare for the 2021. I will now turn the call to our acting CFO, Mr. Li Danchen, who will review our financial highlights for the quarter. Thank you, Jeffrey. Good morning and good evening, everyone. For the third quarter of 2020, we recorded total revenues of $209.4 million, a 13% increase from the same period of 2019. Our e-commerce services revenues for this quarter increased by 12% to $172.4 million as a result of an increase in the number of discount coupons redeemed. E-commerce services contributed to 82.3% of our total revenues this quarter. Our online advertising services revenues for this quarter increased by 17% to $36.7 million as a result of an increase in property developers' demand for online advertising. Online advertising services contributed 17.5% of our total revenues this quarter. Our listing services revenues for this quarter decreased by 45% to $0.3 million from the same quarter last year as a result of a decrease in demand from secondary real estate brokers. Our cost of sales for this quarter increased by 12% to $14.8 million from the same quarter last year primarily due to increased cost of advertising resources purchased from media platforms related to our online advertising business. Our selling general and administrative expenses increased by 16% to $181.8 million from the same quarter last year. This increase was primarily due to increased marketing expenses related to our e-commerce business. Income from operations was $12.9 million for the third quarter of 2020, compared to $15.8 million for the same quarter of 2019. Net income attributable to Lurju shareholders was $11.7 million for the third quarter of 2020, an increase of 5% from the same quarter of 2019. Non-GAAP income from operations was $16.6 million for the third quarter of 2020, compared to $19.5 million for the same quarter of 2019. Non-GAAP net income attributable to e, uh, to Lurju shareholders was $14.7 million for the third quarter of 2020, an increase of 4% from the same quarter of 2019. For the first nine months of 2020, we recorded $489.1 million in total revenue, a 5% increase from the same period of last year. Our e-commerce revenues increased by 4% to $377.8 million for the, fir- for the first nine months of 2020, as a result of an increase in the number of discount coupons redeemed, partially offset by a decrease in the average price per discount coupon redeemed. E-commerce services contributed 77.2% of total revenues for the first nine months of 2020. Our online advertising revenues contributing 22.6% of total revenues increased by 9% to $110.7 million for the first nine months of 2020 due to an increase in property developers' demand for online advertising, while our listing revenues decreased by 54% to $0.6 million as a result of a decrease in secondary real estate brokers' demand for the first nine months of 2020. Income from operations was $14 million for the first nine months of 2020 an increase of 61% from the same period of 2019. Net income attributable to Lurju shareholders was $13.2 million for the first nine months of 2020, an increase of 88% from the same period of 2019. Non-GAAP income from operations was $24.8 million for the first nine months of 2020, an increase of 25% from the same period of 2019. Non-GAAP income from Non-GAAP in- net income attributable to Lurju shareholders was $21.9 million for the first nine months of 2020, an increase of 38% from the same period of 2019. As of September 30, 2020, our cash and cash equivalents and restricted cash 
or $273.8 million. Our net cash flow used in operating activities for the third quarter of 2020 was $4.4 million, primarily comprised of a decrease in amount due to related parties of $30.7 million, an increase in amounts due from related parties of $16.3 million, and an increase in accounts receivable of $15.3 million, partially offset by non-GAAP net income of $14.9 million, an increase in other current liabilities and accrued expenses of $23.1 million, an increase in income tax payable and other tax payable of $7.7 million, and a decrease in customer deposits of $12 million. Looking ahead, we estimate that our fourth quarter 2020 total revenues will be approximately between $230 million and $250 million, which represents an increase of approximately 1% to 10% from the same quarter of last year. Please note that this forecast reflects our current and preliminary review, which is subject to change. This concludes our prepared remarks. We are now ready to take your questions. Operator, please go ahead. Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press pound or hash key. It's star followed by 1 to ask your question. Thank you. We have the first question from the line of Marco Rodriguez from Stonegate Capital, please go ahead. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, taking my questions. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the two new platforms or um, relationships you have here, the um, the uh, uh, the double o, the, the the excuse me, the, the Tmall housing platform as well as the. Um, uh, Alibaba uh, Sina um, um, uh, con um, partnership that you have. Can you just provide a little bit more detail in terms of um, how those platforms performed versus your expectations? And then if you could also, if possible, um, discuss the impact you saw from revenues um, for those two um, uh, new relationships. Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, first, uh, the relationship uh, between Rezhi and Timo or Alibaba is based on our uh, partnership from our affiliate company eHouse uh, e and Alibaba. And uh, uh, our actually uh, the aim of the partnership is uh, to build up an online to offline uh, system, new, system, new trading system. And that is why we actually launched uh, ETC. We call it it's a real estate transaction cooperation um, mechanism, and to involve all parties uh, during the real estate tra uh, transactions. Uh, I think the first uh, step for us to be, uh, from the partnership is the double eleven uh, activities. Um, as you know, Timo is a quite a sophisticated e-commerce platform, uh, but usually it's, uh, it's for the uh, fast consumer products. Uh, while the real estate projects, uh, it's, it's quite a big, big commodity, and uh, we, we try to test the consumer habits on that. Uh, from the effects of the double eleven activities, actually we received a very positive uh, feedback from the consumers first side. Uh, there, uh, there are a lot of people actually. They are quite interesting uh, in the commodities, which is the houses uh, we put on the Timor uh, shops. Uh, second one is that there do many a lot of people. They asking questions about the uh, uh, houses they they look for at the Timor stores, and also uh, they raised a lot of questions previously we cannot get from our platforms. Uh, the third one is that uh, we we try to connect the online uh, in, we how, how to say how online users which are interested in certain projects to offline and showing rooms. Uh, we are trying the uh, mechanism uh, how to introduce these uh, these online people consumers to the offline trading to 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 have them get involved in that 
offline training activities. I, I think this is the first step. Uh, we we do from, we do receive the very positive feedback from consumers. On the other hand, is we received a very strong positive feedback from um, our clients, which is uh, the developers. Uh, they are very interested in the huge audience of the uh, Alibaba, and uh, they are trying to test if they, from this huge traffic, they can find out the uh, quite intensive uh, house interest, uh, which are uh, which can be uh, involved in the further tra uh, transactions. So uh, from both sides, that, that laid a very solid foundation to the success of our Double Eleven. Activities. I think uh, this is the only the first one, uh, first step. Uh, from from double eleven, we are continue to do the double twelve activities, and we are actually uh, doing a new mechanism to see uh, if the Tmall platform can both play a advertising platform and a trans transaction platforms. Uh, we we will try to uh, develop some you know, innovative. Transaction tools or transactional systems based on the Tmall to to further push ahead the digitalization of the real estate industry. Um, from the revenue side, I think uh, it, it, it does uh, a great job, and I think uh, it will contribute to our first quarter revenue, advertising online advertising revenue, uh, significantly. Thank you. That was very helpful. And, and do you have any data um, that relates to the traffic that you're driving with the Tmall platform? I think we have released a post uh, 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 about our double eleven um, double eleven um, activities. But we combined the four platforms: actually, uh, the Tmall and the Suning and the Lezhi and the eHouse. Uh, we all together. Uh, we sorry. Give me one minute. I give you the number. We had actually received uh, uh, the unique visitors from activities. That's the 47.5 million unique visitors, and the total page view traffic is about uh, 289 million. Excellent. Thank you. And um, can you maybe compare and contrast um, the double 12 promotions that you'll be um, uh, launching here in Q4? How do those sort of compare to the double 11? Uh, I think uh, uh, a lot of uh, developers previous, because, of we, uh, because the double 11 coverage is very wide, and uh, some, some developers actually, they are still interested in continue to do the double 12. And uh, some developers actually, because they already see uh, strong traffic, but they need uh, use actual actual transactions. So I think the scale scale of the double twelve may be a little bit smaller than the double eleven. However, the influential because we during the period of double twelve, we also do a lot of influential activities, uh, which concludes our. Uh, Lezhi financial forums and also a lot of live broadcasting activities. Uh, so the inf infer inference of the double 12 should be greater than the tw uh, double 11. Got it. And, and last quick question, if I might. Um, could you maybe just update us on what you're seeing in terms of just real estate activity um, and as that also relates to any sort of, of increases in um, regulations. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, the regulation also the, uh, I said the market of the real estate, uh, real estate in the next one year, I think uh, the keeping stable will be the mainstream. Uh, there will be not a big up and downs, I think, uh, in the next, uh, next year. Uh, however, we already see that the uh, uh, differences between different developers. Uh, you know, there are three, three red lines. The new regulators released uh, three red lines set for the developers. So some uh, some aggressive developers will be cautious. Uh, they will decrease our their investment in buying lands. Uh, so the turnover of their transaction 
uh, risk transition will go down. However, some healthy developers they, they which give us uh, which they they will receive a good opportunity to buy more uh, land at a reasonable prices. So the structure of the real estate industry is, is changing. Uh, for us, I think uh, from this year, I think uh, RG is aggressively pushing ahead the digitalization of their pro uh, promotion from offline to online. So a lot of P uh, developers already realize the value, how to uh, how to increase their uh, inputs on of their online promotions, and uh, also they they received uh, great pressure from the offline costs, uh, mainly the. Uh, Distributional uh, costs from one of our com computers. So I think the digitalization uh, is a very good opportunity in the next year uh, for online developers. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Eric Wen from Blue Lotus, please go ahead. Hello, good evening, uh, management. Congratulations on the strong guidance. I have two questions. Uh, first question is, can you comment on the breakdown of your guidance, uh, including advertising and e-commerce uh, that contribute to uh, your guidance? Um, I Our guidance? Yeah, uh, and uh, my second question is that your competitor has reported very strong numbers of third-party agents' uh, revenue growth. I wonder if you can elaborate on your competitive strategy in Fangyo and how it will enhance uh, its uh, competitiveness in the coming year. Thanks. Uh, for your qu first question, I think the breakdown will be likely, uh, likely 30, around 30%. Will be from the online advertising, and 70% uh, will be the e-commerce. Th that's around that. That uh, from our from, from our revenue guidance. Uh, for the second one is that uh, Fangyo ac actually is not inflated with the so I'm not proper to answer this question. However, I I had I would note to that is that I think the uh, offline business. Especially that the uh, distributional uh, business uh, is, is is reaching a point that press a great pressure on the developer's cost structure. Uh, most uh, developers actually they are talking about their distributional costs, uh, which takes most of their product uh, profits. So they, they are also thinking about that. While they also asking us is that. Is there really any online can provide real buyers to this, uh, <clears throat> to to them so that they can recognize as their online buyers? So I think this is a great task, also a great opportunity for us. Um, from from practice side, I think uh, we we do believe that almost everybody going into the offline showrooms must have. Uh, online experience before. So our task is how to uh, catch these online people and get them recognized by the offline sales of the developers so that I think the cost structure of developers can be uh, reasonab reasonably changed. Okay, thanks very much. Very helpful. Thank you. Once again, if you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your name to be announced. Once again, if you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your name to be announced. As there are no further questions, 
I would like to hand the call back to your presenters for any closing remarks. This concludes this call. If you have any follow-up questions, please contact us at the number or emails provided on our earnings release and on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the conference for today. Thank you for participating. You may all disconnect now. Thank you.